Okay, welcome to lesson 2.2 .2 in integers. We're now going to continue our assault on integers. So lesson 2.2 .2 is basically referring to um, trying to get you to clean up some of the stuff we were doing so you understand the combinations of positives and negatives. So I'm not going to have you do the whole chart. In the classroom, I had everybody fill out the whole thing. You could just use your, your rules and stuff. It's actually fairly straightforward. Um, this is a multiplication chart, so to fill it out, it's actually very easy. What you do is go negative 5 times negative 5, and you use your calculator, and you'll find that this is positive 25. Negative 5 times negative 5, sorry, times 4 is, negative, is positive 20, and then you'll notice this is positive 15, this is positive 10, and this is positive 5, okay? And as you fill all of these numbers in, you will notice something very important. And that very important thing is that these are all positive, okay? So when you take a negative number, I don't know if I have a negative number, and a negative number, it always gives you a positive answer. Now, let's go over here to this side over here. Here we're multiplying positives by the negatives. So we've got negative 5 times positive 1, that's negative 5. Negative 4 times positive 1, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. You should notice something here. Every one of these answers is negative. So this is what I want you to understand here. A negative times a positive is negative. Now when you go down to the bottom here, on the left hand side, you're going to go positive 2 and you're multiplying by the numbers up top which are negative. So sorry, positive 1 times negative. So what I've got here is positive 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Positive 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and you notice negative 25. What I want you to understand from filling out this side is that a negative up here times a positive gives you a, got my big marker, a negative. Okay? Now, let's do the next one on the other side. I've got neg positive times positives here, okay? So, get rid of that. This is positive 1 times positive 1. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. This is positive 2, positive 3, positive 4, positive 5. So, what do you notice about a positive times a positive? It's always a positive. Now, that's important because... We're going to get away from tiles, and we're going to have to know what the answers are without drawing tiles. All right, tiles work really great when using small numbers, like 2 times 3, or 2 times 4, or negative 1 times negative 3. But what happens when it's negative 116 times 257? I'm sorry, you don't want to start drawing tiles for that. That's stupid. So, I want you to sit down and see if you can write out a strategy for yourself on how to multiply a negative integer by a positive integer, and how to multiply a positive integer by any positive integer. Okay. Any negative by any positive. It's real simple. I'm going to use an example here. Any negative, oops, that's way too big. Negative, I did change that. All right, let's try it again. Negative two. And we're going to multiply that by a positive number, positive 4. Okay? Now, we noticed from the previous page that any time we had a negative times a positive, here's my negatives on this side here, here's my positives over here, the result was a negative. All right? So, the signs are different. A negative times a positive equals a negative. We know that. So my first step is put down a negative sign. And now multiply the numbers. So we have negative 2 times positive 4. The signs are different. That means your answer is negative. And 2 times 4 is 8. There's your answer. Okay. So whenever you multiply, this is how you do it. You put down the correct sign, then you multiply the numbers. 
Spanish strategy could be used for any positive by any positive. Well, you got positive 2 times positive 4. Right? Now, I didn't put a multiplication sign in there because we sometimes we're going to be working with uh, the variable x a lot. So we're going to get away from using multiplication signs. Whenever things are side by side like this, it means to multiply. So positive and a positive. When the signs are both positive, what did we get bound down here? Positive times a positive is a positive. So we're going to put down a plus. And then 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so put down the correct sign. which in this case is a plus, and then multiply the numbers. And that gives us positive 8. All right, now, there's several properties that we use in multiplication of integers that make it a little bit easier. You notice in, these, in none of these cases have we used 0. Well, this goes back to the understanding of what 0 is. 0 is nothing. Okay, so if I take a look at 3 times 0, that means 3 groups of nothing. Well, 3 groups of nothing is nothing. Right here, over here, you can see it. It's actually drawn for you. There's 3 groups of nothing. How much do you have? Nothing. Okay, and this one here means put in no groups of 3. Well, if you don't put it in, nothing changes, so your bank stays blank. So, Anything multiplying with a zero always ends up being zero. Negative three, take out three groups of zero, da da da, there's nothing left. Put, uh, sorry, zero times negative three, don't put any groups of negative three in, that is also zero. So when you multiply by a zero, or there's any zero in a multiplication statement, the answer is zero. Okay? So if I use the variable for n being number, okay, number times 0 is 0, and 0 times a number is 0. So that takes care of that part. Now, multiplicative identity is another word for the multiplicative commutative property of, neg of uh, multiplication. And it's really simple. 3 times 1 and 1 times 3 are the same thing. So negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3. And positive 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And you can see the, grant, the thing over there. Put in three groups of 1, that's your top one. Put in one group of negative 3, I said one group of 3, there you go on the bottom one. <coughs> negative 3, sorry. Sorry, this is this one here and this one here. Okay? Now, negative 3 times positive 1 and is negative 3, and positive 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So you could switch these around any way you want. All right? Now, these haven't changed. The rules are the same. Okay? I just want you to understand that you could flip around numbers when you're multiplying anytime you want to make your life easier, just as long as you, don't, you keep the signs with them. Any number multiplied by 1 is itself. Any number uh, 1 multiplies by is itself. It doesn't change. Now, reversing order of multiplication, you can change three groups of four and four groups of three. You'll see right here, there's four groups of three. Here's three groups of four. They are 12. It works the same way in negatives, as long as you keep the signs with them. Now, the multiplicative property of, of multiplication just means that the first number, A, A is the first number, and B is the second number. What does this mean? It just means that whether, it doesn't matter what the sign is, it doesn't matter what the number is, when you're multiplying, they can change around. They can switch places. Okay? And that makes it easier for your head sometimes. Okay. So how does this apply to us? We're going to use the properties to find out whether an answer will be positive or negative. Now remember, we have two rules here. The signs are different. It is equal to a positive. If the signs are the same, the answer is negative. So pause the recording and put down the sign of those multiplications. All right. So here, negative 3 times negative 5, the signs are the same. That means this is positive. Here, negative and positive, the signs are different. That means it's negative. 
positive 4 and negative. Positive and negative signs are different. That means it's negative. Negative, negative, the signs are the same. That means your answer is positive. And the negative fraction times a positive fraction, the signs are different. That means your answer is negative. Okay? Now, you can flip these around any way you want. Okay, that's what we were talking about previously. This answer here, negative 3 times negative 5, is the same as negative 5 times negative 3. That's your commutative property, your, your identity property. This one here is the same way, positive 5 times negative 2. Now, you'll notice the signs stayed with the numbers. You can't start messing that up. Right? So, you can swap, swap them around. Okay, now, let's do the actual answer. Okay? Remember we were talking about how to do this? First thing you do, write down the sign. Second, write down the answer. So, this is not got a sign. Now, when it doesn't have a sign, it means positive. Okay? The reason for that is we've been working with positive numbers since, well, the last seven grades. So, when we just write down a number, we're going to assume it's positive. So, a negative times a positive means that your answer is going to be negative. And 13 times 4 is 52. Now, I want you to complete the next, the, the rest of them, please. Pause the recording and do that. Okay. This is a positive 12, so negative times a positive is a negative. 6 times 12 is 72. A positive times a negative is a negative. 4 times 7 is 28. A positive times a positive, the signs are the same. That means it's positive. 9 times 8, 72. This is a positive 3 times a negative. The signs are different. That means it's negative. And 3 times 7 is 21. Now, this is the zero stuff. Anything times zero is zero. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Here, zero multiplied by any number, doesn't matter, is zero. Now, remember, zero does not have a sign. It's the dividing between positive and negative. It is neither one. Okay, so isn't that easier than drawing tiles? Can you imagine taking out four groups of 13, taking out six groups of 12, putting in four groups of negative 7, putting in nine groups of positive 8, putting in three groups of negative 7, taking out, well, that wouldn't be easy, taking out nine groups of 0. That wouldn't be hard. All right? Drawing tiles is much more difficult. If you can remember the rules, it's simple. Negative times a negative is a positive, right? A positive times a positive is a positive. When the signs are the same, they're positive. When the signs are different, they're negative. It doesn't matter what order they are. They are still negative. All right. I want you to fill in the blanks. What's in the box? All right. So the first step is, what do you multiply 9 by to get 18? That is a 2. Now, you have to look at the signs now. It's got to be negative. That means the answer, the product is negative, means the signs have to be opposite. they got to be different. So this one here is negative. That one's got to be positive. The next one, 7 times 2 is 14, but it's got to be a positive 14. The only way you can get positive is with both signs being the same. Okay, 4 times 3 gives me 12, but it's a negative, so that means the signs have to be different. That's got to be positive 3. 6 times 4 is 24. The answer has to be a negative, which means your signs have to be different. And 6 times 6 is 36, and I have to have a negative sign, which means I have to have... Uh, a negative there because they have to be different. All right. Patterns. See if you can figure this out. 3, 6, 9, 12, positive and negatives. Write the first, th the next three patterns, please. All right. What you should have noticed is we're skip counting by 12s. 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5, 3 times 6, and 3 times 7. Now look at the signs. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. There you go. 7, 14, 21, 28. Try that one. All right. We're skip counting by sevens now. 7 times 1, 7 times 2, 7 times 3, 7 times 4, 7 times 5, 7 times 6, 7 times 7. 
positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, and the next one would have been a negative. Three, five, seven, nine. I'm going up by two each time. So we figure that out. Okay, so three, five, seven, nine. I'm doing the odd numbers, aren't I? Three, five, seven, nine. All right. Well, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and the next one would be a negative. All right. So you're going to have to be able to fill in the blanks, and that situation there. Okay. Now, in the next step, what we're going to do is we have to have you come up with a actual problem. Okay, so if you encounter the problem of positive 3 times negative 4, what problem might that be? So what you have to do is think of 3 times being, so positive 3 as being doing something 3 times, putting in 3 groups, you're going to do it 3 times. Now 4 being negative means somehow something's got to get less by 4. Okay, so think of a problem where you have three repetitions or three times a decrease of four. Now, there's ways of doing this. You could say that Bob bought right, three bottles of pop four times. Now, think of his money. Okay. He buys three bottles of pop four times. His money goes down negative four each time. Got that right? Oh, sorry, four. Four dollars. Hey, I get this right. Just looked at it and didn't make any sense. There we go. So you get buy. He buys three bottles of pop for four dollars. So one bottle is negative four. The second bottle is negative eight. The third bottle is negative 12. Okay? So what's another way where you can have a re repetition of three negatives? So Bob backed up four steps three times. Okay? So he's going to go back four steps. He's going to do it three times. Okay? Let's take a look at the next question. Create a problem for negative 3 times positive 5. Now, remember, this is a loss of three groups of positive 5. Okay? So, this one here, John, is going to go down 3 floors five times. Okay? So down three floors, there we go, five times. See how it works? All right. There's your assignment. Get at it. Again, if you have any trouble, give me a call. Come and see me. I will be available at lunch hours.